Uh, well, thank you for joining today. You know, how, wait, what, what time is it out there, by the way, right now? It's um, probably just a couple of minutes after 9 a.m. 9 a.m. And of course, you're in, um, you're in Brisbane. Thursday. Now. Yeah, we're we Thursday. Yeah, yeah, Brisbane. I'm still in Wednesday. I'm oh. still in Wednesday. <laughs> I know. And isn't it great that it allows time to be irrelevant? Like we are all one time. That's the best exactly. part. Yeah. Yes. Just that yes. human form feeling something a bit different. Indeed. 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 Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm just so excited because, you know, we've never spoken before, but I've heard a lot about you. You know, people were recommending me to you. Lauren, Lauren was actually one of the people that wanted to connect us together. And uh, how did you actually meet Lauren? She somehow came to my group called Deep Dive Into The Soul, mm -hmm. which was not created by me. It was created by my three beings. And to start it up, I never wanted to create a group. I never wanted to do any of those things. Mm -hmm. And so this Facebook group got created about four years ago. And um, it was um, to bring souls together in order for love. And so to feel the heart space more, that part of our, of, you know, of our being, to feel that spot and to dissolve the mind. So this got created by that. And there were many people that were following me through a fasting system that I actually went through which i was um kind of commanded to do and that i i spent nearly 518 days and it, it kind of came from that and many times i've been wanting to close that group down um and i couldn't do it because when you bring groups and souls together that are able to love and expand greater then you it's not about you right it's mm. about something greater than you and that's how that group came about and lauren came onto that many people have through either seeing any videos or being part of witnessing my journey my journey was live people watched me on video live and um watching me dissolve i suppose and not being in my body wait, so that's how, wait, how that came about yeah you said people were watching you dissolve can you can well you... i was would say um yeah through the, the the fasting system i went through every day i was doing nearly doing a video or speaking on there and i was speaking in a very, very different way and uh mm -hmm. so they watched something that I, I was taken over pretty much and uh even though the, i call myself the little ranjit which is the mind we have our mind and observing the mind and seeing how that was and these um, wisdoms and things that were coming through pretty much instantaneously. The things that I would never ever kind of read or uh, um, I suppose um, it was wisdom that we already knew. But my mind took a long time to catch up to that wisdom. You know, like when I re reflect back, I'm more integrated now. That was back in 2018 that kind of started. And I call it my third death. And um, it um, it took me a while to integrate back in, observe the mind more, and actually sort of look at, wow, you know, the wisdom of the book of truth is all in us, Jerome and everyone here, you know. It's it's there. It's just having that faith and that trust and, and, and creating thoughts of belief that this is real because we dissolve our belief systems you know as a as a as our pro or well, we want to call it pro we blame programs we blame trickster we blame you know the evil one we blame all these things but in actual fact it's you and um when we really dissolve you we come into the i am and that's where you know where most people want to be and i it took me a while because i i've always been in love with love you know from a very young age you know generally people on this journey they've always been pretty happy They've always been in love and they've always been probably misunderstood. But when you are misunderstood or ruthlessly misunderstood, you're definitely on the right path because most people are stuck in their program minds. They're most people are stuck in those places, you know, even from ancestral bases, you know. So it's sort of like when you're on the path of no one understands me, no one understands I don't want to eat, no one understands like I want to be with the what well, for me, I never did this 
through health reasons because mm. I'm already whole and healed. I believe that. I did it for reasons of to be with a greater one inside of me, to have that connection and that intimacy. And I think that's what most people could be seeking is that, that depth of um, passion and intimacy and fire within yourself. And this is why you don't have to operate the third eye. You know, I noticed in this journey that many people want to open up the third eye, but in actual fact, it will open up automatically for you. But you want to make sure that's opened up, not from a place that you get stuck in certain spaces, you know, because I have spoken to many people with, so they've gone through, you know, the psychosis or disassociation and even transitioned over. So I've spoken to many people like that. And that's why I recognize that I have come down here for the purpose of one thing. And that's to love yourself greater than you can ever love yourself. Because when you know true love, you know, everything, everything else becomes love. And this is the space when you open up that, because no one's really been loved, Jerome, you know, no one's been loved with that power, the field force of that space. They don't know what that is. They assume they know what it is from the mind, but they don't know. They don't really truly know forgiveness. They don't really truly know that place, you know, to be with the greater one in you, whatever that is for everybody. You know, wow. for me, it's the I am, right? Because, like, if I love me, I can love you more. And if I love you more, well, man, you can love everyone else more. And we just get to that place where everything is dissolved and we can be in the other dimension of the earth plane. So I can, I can talk forever, Jerome about this subject and this is this thing that most people want to know is how you open up your heart how you go deeper falling into the intimacy and how you ignite the fire i call it the orgasmus state lots of people call it sexual energy but how do you fire that up and i'm celibate for 10 and a half years and i love it i feel more sexual than any 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 point in my life i'm more sexual and i get blood tests done and i'm you know i'm, I'm 53 and I haven't, uh, I don't have any signs of menopause that they say in this world. I actually have this thing where my estradiol levels are so high that they actually think I'm taking something because it's 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 so high that it's high of a, of a young teenager going into womanhood and they can't explain it. And I just said it could be my heritage, <laughs> you know. Women in India, North India, you know, they're having babies in mid-50s and stuff like that. It could be that, could be biological. But um, my sisters uh, um, don't have that. And so it's, um, it's unique. I have oil come out of my eye. I've had that tested, been to the optometrist. So I have excessive oil. I have glands that, I mean, this is, this is the fountain of youth, right? So it is the hormones. It's the glands. This is the nourishment. You know, in our normal dry states, we are more hydrated. And so it's a it's a beautiful journey of wisdom. And a lot of this wisdom's come after the mind to catch up, right? Because the mind's very slow on this planet. But our soul, mm. our you know, when we open up the heart, it's on supersonic speed. Mm. And so, so as we move with technology in our body, the earth moves with us. We move together in unison. So as we advance our technology of our form, so does everything else advance. And that's why we don't really truly need to live or consume. You know, our consumption is through our skin. We breathe through our skin. So uh, that's a lot there. Oh, my gosh. That's come through for you, Jerome. You're, for you. you're, you're channeling right now and yeah. you, you know yeah. this is beautiful wisdom that you're really transmitting to us this is an energy transmission i feel that you're projecting this energy and reflecting this mm. energy and connecting it, you know because when you're talking about like the orgasma state and when you get the fire you know running through you you said you hit the fountain of youth when somebody's listening to these things like orgasma state the fountain of youth like how do you even how do you even describe what that is it is it an experience that someone has to have for themselves or is it a, is it a state that that can be rationalized or do you have to get out of the mind you know 
Well, it's definitely an experience, uh, a personal experience that you have with the connection with Source. And, and that it doesn't matter how I say this, a person can only understand it through the perception of who they really are. But they can't understand it unless they really truly do let go of the mind. And there is activation for sure. You know, I, I didn't know about activation before this journey. I didn't know you could activate people like just by hugging them, talking to them through your sounds of your voice, being with them. There is that. And um, however, there's a space where you can't do this through the will of the mind. It has to be in the surrender of thy will. And that took me a long, long time to understand that, that, you know, Ranjit or little Ranjit or little Jerome or the little minds here, that, you know, when you hand, and hand everything over to us, the I am, everything then we can enter in but the heart has to be open for that because you don't want to have other things enter in right mm. you want to have the truth enter in you want to have that enter into you and i don't believe this is for everybody jerome because mm. that that the field and the energy is so strong like you can actually burn up on the inside i've heated up many many times and i've fallen on the ground many many times and so there is a guidance and inner wisdom that you've got to connect with, which is your soul, in order to help you through that. Nobody can do that for you. Because when you start going into really strong, high energies, like you don't sleep and all these sorts of things happen, you know, you rest, you live in meditative states, you don't have to practice med uh, meditation, you don't have to do any of those things, that you actually come and be one with that and you start merging into the atmosphere emerging into the cosmos, emerging and sinking into the earth, then this is an energy place where it's a whole different reasoning, you know, of the mind. And it's so powerful, you can't really, really explain it. And I apologize for that, you know, even in my little range, because, like, I know, I already know that many people strive and hunger for this more than they hunger for food. Right. That this is the place that you want to be, and I know that. I know. I know everybody wants that, and that's why I, I talk a lot about relationships, because the relationship is with you first, and then you can have the most amazing relationships with anyone, no matter what level that they're at, no matter what level, and um, that part of forgiveness of you know your family or my parents didn't treat me right, all this sort of stuff. All that comes into such a beautiful, beautiful space where it's not about being a doormat or being disrespected because you end up respecting yourself more. It's about just allowing the release of yourself with that person so that the tra trauma didn't even actually occur. It didn't even really truly happen because in that person is also suffering. So we come with compassion. You know, we come come from that place and when you see that you recognize every human person on this planet because i'm really about the human more than anything they are you they're literally you yeah wow wow yeah. you know as i'm listening to you it's so interesting because there was a book that was recommended to me by a lady named uh, christiana el chayam and she talked about this book called the the teachings or the the wisdom the teachings of the masters of the far east you've heard this one i have heard that one okay but in yeah. this book the life and teachings of the masters of the far east they talk about the, the i am presence they it, it's it just continued throughout the book they keep talking about the i am the i am you know the mm -hmm. i am presence I am. And I've heard you say multiple times, I am. So what what is I am? What does that mean to you when you when you say it? Because I, I have a feeling that it's different than what when other people say it. Yeah. I, f I feel I mean, it definitely is a presence that is it's like, like it is you. So, you know, some, 
sometimes you can think, oh, it's greater than you. Well, it is kind of greater than the mind and everything that in the human form. But it's de definitely a place where you feel the sounds of everything. Like you feel the sounds of heaven. You feel it all. Mm. Like you can feel it in the cell of a leaf of a tree. And, um, you know, I can say I've had lots of guidance with Yeshua and um, our Father. I do feel that. And my three beings are my three angels, which are my imaginary friends. And so the I am seems to me there's definitely a fire and, and it's, it's pure love, like in a way that how we were created in the first place, it is that one. And because when you bring anything back to a zero point or dissolve everything, the first thing that is created is the big explosion because of love and so to me i think the i am is the greatest field force of love to be ever present that's inside of you oh, the yeah. great wow. the great it's like goose oh, i've got goosebumps right yeah. so it's yeah. like uh, it's like it's you jerome you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it's you like everything is you everything that like all these people are all through you and uh, uh you know there's a part of me before i had this conversation it was like oh can you just pour on jerome oh and yeah i can do that tell him thank you for everything he does and i said yeah i can do that tell him he's the most amazing soul his light is forever present everything in him is pure everything that he feels is always been true <laughs> i said i can do that i can do all that i can speak wow. you know everything is just you wow. 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 yeah this is powerful this is so powerful you know you're you're reminding me of a a song i used to hear back in the day and it was by whitney houston and she <laughs> Oh, Whitney. Say again? I love Whitney. Yeah. And she sang this song called The Greatest Love of All. Yeah. You know, she said, that's the greatest love of all, the greatest, you know? And that's what I feel like you're describing right now when you're talking about this, because, I mean, these are things that I wasn't taught in school. I, mm -hmm. wasn't, even, I wasn't even really taught in church you know the the type of stuff that you're talking about it feels like it just goes beyond you know to have that kind of perspective to kind of to have that kind of perception not only about yourself not only about this source but but about everyone about the whole world that everyone is you wow yeah i mean it didn't just happen through you know fasting right <laughs> i don't believe in the word fasting mm. you know I I believe it's our natural state of being, our light, who we are. Yeah. Um, but it's, I've been, it's a journey from before you were born through the womb. Mm. You know, when you connect, it's before, it's like many people ask, oh, did this just happen through fasting, this and that? Forget, forget about fasting. Mm. It happens anyway, and it happens naturally. I never went through a process of, you know, you do, you know, have raw foods through this and then you, then you go dry. I never went through that process. I was eating pasta before I was taken over. So bang. Wow. And the, the yeah. one, the, one, yeah, one of the things I said just as I remember when I before I went in this journey because I heard the sounds of heaven inside of me before I even said yes. Mm -hmm. Um, little Ranjit said yes because the mind's so slow. <laughs> they already it, the path is written out for you. The divine will always correct. It just wants you to come this way. Yeah. and um yeah i just remember that i said there was two things one is i'm not going up to a mountain and sit under a cave for years and years i want to be here where everybody is mm -hmm. right doing service in western civilization paying for bills doing all that you know and and being a witness that this is possible exactly where you are and facing everything that's in the mirror not to discard anything mm -hmm. all has to be faced and so 
I said, I'm not doing it any other way. No, definitely not. And the other one was, oh, you better deal with cravings pretty quickly. <laughs> that, that was the other one. Okay. So you can, you, yeah, so there were the two things that I, 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 I commanded to, okay. you know, like, that's it. Yeah. Mm, for me to come in. Little Ranjit to say yes. Little Ranjit has to say yes. The mind of our little little person has to say yes. We have to nurture. We have to nurture the child. And so, you know, you actually recognize more how important, how beautiful that is, right? When you when you're human, like you go, oh wow, like oh my gosh, you know, little Jerome, little Ranjit, little our little minds, man, we're in this. And how do you how do you bring that together? How do you bring that balance together? How do you become all one? And so it's like it's it's a fun, it's very comical here. It's it's a fun game, and it's a you you know you enjoy that part. But long as you're in integrity, you know, long as you're in integrity. Right, right. Mm -hmm. When you you talked about handling cravings, like you better handle the cravings. What were some challenging cravings for you that you had to handle when you started the journey? Well, I actually thought that it could be the my cultural food, right, which is um, North Indian Punjabi food. That's what I thought. <laughs> but in actual fact, I didn't end up having the issue. What I was taught something was how to utilize the the spaces. I call them rooms in my palace because I'm in the kingdom. So I'm in my palace and I call them rooms. Other people call them realms or spaces or whatever. But I'd open a door up, right? And I could eat everything that I wanted to eat. I, I used to smoke cigars a long time ago. I could smoke my cigars. I could listen to music. I could have all my friends say a, a, a feast table was created for me. So I could consume everything. But the, the key thing that I recognized, which I thought other people were going through it, is I could actually taste the food. And I spoke about this um, in... Uh, the fasting group I was in, where I was having these experiences going, do you know you can taste the food in this place? You know, you can have whatever you want. It's already been created in the heavens first, you know, but it's come down here dense, right? And we think we have to eat it, but we actually don't because we've already eaten it. <laughs> you know, we already created it. And so I went there and I smoked cigars. You can do anything you want, you know, and have fun and joy and dance. And, you know, women always love dancing. And I'll tell you a little bit about that soon, why we do that. And so it's sort of like, you know, all this is happening. And then everyone that I love, they all came to my feast table. And some people could feel it. They could feel going into this, you know, space with me. And I'd play music that I was listening to with this group of people in Deep Dive of the Soul and all this. And so there's a lot of fun in this journey. And, um, yeah, so cravings went straight away. I've never had the issue of cravings. And, and the other thing was um, what Jesus said to me, like, okay, Renji, do not look behind you. Do not look sideways. Stay in the light. There is no darkness in this place. And there isn't any darkness okay mm. no darkness no darkness wow. wow so when you were talking about the three beings you said my three beings when you talked about the the deep dive into the soul group you said i didn't create this group my three beings did so were you talking about the three beings that you said you're three angels or are the, those different beings no they're angels to me but I've got, they're, they're light beings, you know what I mean? They're full of light. I've seen them once in my physical eye, and it was when I became, at that time, my, my husband was, I, I'm not with my husband anymore of 20 years, but he was um, very ill, and, um, you know, he ended up in ICU twice, but we got him through that. That's another, I saw, the, you know, they were there as well. But I saw them when I became, I gave my life, I suppose, if you want to say born again, when I did that, surrender into that i physically saw them and so did somebody else and um so i've had some miraculous things occur and um they were my imaginary friends when i were a child and so they've kind of been there and, they're, and they're, they are three and they're, they're with me now jerome and um they they guided me to create the group yeah wow well, they're kind of not guided, but like I guide myself, but it's like uh, we're with you is probably, you know, a 
way to say it. Okay, okay. And this trinity, this this yeah. group of three beings. You got it. Yeah. Uh, you know the group of three beings that are with you. You said they've they've been with you since childhood. So yeah, I've always been sensitive, like to sense these these other beings since since childhood. Yeah. If I didn't, wow. I, my mind didn't know. My, 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 my mind, my mind never knew. You know, I come from a very big family. I have 48 cousins and I was born in London and my mum's older sister is married to my dad's older brother. So they had four children there was four of us. We were the younger ones. So we lived in this household which all the rallies, everyone came over. I never knew anything but not having people around me or not having passion around me or I thought conflict was normal, which I still think conflict is beautiful. You can dissolve conflict very quickly. I was a bit of a peacemaker, but it's really funny. My name, Ranjit, actually means warrior of peace. Mm. And so I was very gentle, kind, laughing, making everyone laugh, happy. And um, so I never grew up in a bedroom. I never grew up probably in a way that, you know, whatever people think is normal because normal is just your normal. And uh, so it's, um, I think, I, I just wanted to be, I always wanted to go home and, you know, even be, I remember when I came to, we migrated to Brisbane, you know, in my early teens, I wanted to go to a private nunnery school because I wanted to be a nun. Mm. I wanted to do ministry work, but, you know, like I come from a Sikh family <laughs> and uh, they actually believe in light. They don't believe in gods and gurus like Hindus do. They believe that the book is the light and the sound and all these things. So there's definitely some wisdom there within my cells in regards to that. Um, but is um, they've been there through everything, mm. everything with me. Mm. Like, I can tell you so many stories. I am not know lots of people can where you've like, oh, my God, you should have died or this should have happened or that should have happened. And it's, it's just like that, that discernment comes with mm. you. Okay. Okay. Mm. And when you you did the master fast system for around 518 days, so over 500 days, the master fast system, you said that you were commanded to do it. Like what do you what do you mean command? I was guided. Well, what happened in 2018, um I did a 21-day water like a water thing. I was just drinking water. And I in that process around day 14, the physical body started to hurt, right? So I'm like going, something not right. But what I did find, I went, aha, there you are. There you are. So I opened a door, right? I'm like, I know you. You know me. We've known each other for a long time. There you are. I'm not letting go of you at all. And same vice versa we're not letting go of you range it either so we're going to tell you what to do so they guided me to that and i said why am i here and they said we're actually going to get you to what they call is dry fast and i said what's dry fast because i didn't know and they said it's when you have nothing and we are with you and i went oh okay and i said yes and that's when I, I, yeah, got guided to Gino. And I watched a lot of those videos of people because I didn't know, like, what, what are you going to, the mind's going to go, what are you going to experience what's going to happen? And I fell in love with all the people that actually did 108 days. And a lot of them are my friends now. And some of them have transitioned over. And I want to talk about that too. And so, um, yeah, they, they became very deeply my friends. And all of a sudden I ended up in here. And within a month I started. It and it was just instant it was around my birthday and i thought everybody was doing it but they weren't and i thought well, what happened where's everyone how come they're not coming with me like what's going on are you having these experiences like so the little rangy got really excited mm -hmm. and then i kind of recognized oh no like it's just me again <laughs> i'm doing it on my own but there are many people that did come through and it, we had some similar ex patterns. There's similar patterns in this experience. And But what I realised is that people are more fear of the light than the fear itself. So 
I notice that when these energies, you know, I think Alatom talks a lot about the energies. So when these energies came through, it was all about how do you kind of manage these energies because you're in a different world now. It's a different space. So you've already separated yourself from from that aspect and I think the reasons that I was able to go through one Jerome is I had a very very strong mind my mind wasn't able to break Mm. and um, this this is where people can go into psychosis so you have to be careful but you have to go into surrender and so I recognize well how come I have strong mind well have a look if I've lived 10 lifetimes even going through this journey everything was taken away from me um you know, my career was gone because I actually had a career in government and my husband, that was going, and then all my, my money was taken off me, so I was completely homeless and stripped away. So you find some patterns with other breath areas where things get stripped away, but there's this thing you don't care. Like, not that you don't care, there's this thing where there's so much joy. And so I was not having any money coming in, nothing like that, and my angel said to me, do not be concerned. It will all be returned to you and a thousandfold. So this is already happening now. I'm in a three-year what's called financial flourishing state at the moment where the wealth transfer is here. So I'm in this phase where all this, I'm making, you know, basically creating more money than I did in my corporate life in a very short space of time. Yeah. So I everything got taken from me, nothing. I didn't have any money coming in. I didn't have government support. Um, I was walking around with an LG eighty dollar phone, and I, I didn't even have. I couldn't even pay for Wi-Fi, and I was still doing videos on Deep Dive of the Soul. You can wow. see them, and you like I'm just in the highest state of joy. Just like oh man, just want to love on you. I just want to love, you know. I just want to give, and I was having these ecstatic moments of, you know, the orgasmus state and what to do with this energy, and like. It was incredible experience. It still is an incredible experience, but I've harnessed it now. What? Like I really know how to manoeuvre through all this sort of stuff. And sometimes I just let the energy go. You go for it. <laughs> like, you know, just be free with it and uh, let, let it be, you know. Became a tree hugger. I used to cl- – there's, there's videos of me climbing trees. <laughs> 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 all sorts of things. Love rocks, love nature, love cosmos. You know, being into the ocean, we are the ocean. You can feel the, the, you know, you can feel everything. So you can feel, you know, you know the ocean creatures and you kind of recognise that we are them. Like you, you really go into dolphins and all these sorts of things that you go into. <laughs> and, it, yeah, then you work out the planets and the universe and you get guided and I've had mystical experiences in those places. It's been fun. This is amazing. This is yeah. amazing. Just hearing you speak, you know, like, I love how you said you, you don't go into psychosis, you go into surrender, mm. you know. Oh, and, nice. That's what you said, I did. you know. And, yeah. and so when you said that your angels told you, because it's interesting, Ranjit, you said that you lost everything. You were homeless, you lost everything, like all your material possessions, the, the money, like the currency was gone. But they, they said, do not be concerned it will all be returned so you know why when the- I, do you know why you know what the best thing about it is is that it gets borrowed it gets borrowed out into the world and it ret- returns back to you greater and when you come when you go through this particular journey and you go to solid rock and go to solid foundation you're recreating your own home you're re- creating the structures of your place so it mm. comes back to you in a place of it i don't even know how to say this because i cry so much because i've just got so much wisdom wisdom and sometimes a little ranjit might feel oh no you know like why me why is it oh, i just have to be me why can't it be someone else right because you don't want to i'm very humble and so when you know that you come from solid found rock this is why we love rock, rocks is that you know you come from the place of god so when it's given back to you then you become a real steward of it and this is really truly about we're going to flourish deep dive of the soul range with you and that's the place i'm in right now because everybody should be free and um, if people have more wisdom they have more integrity 
but we're also responsible. Yeah. Sorry, mm. sorry to interrupt there. No, it's fine. Yeah. So you, you, with more wisdom comes more responsibility. Yes. Like you have to have integrity. You're saying you get the integrity once you get the wisdom, but you also are responsible. Yeah. Okay. Cause and effect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can't have one without the other. No. Okay. Okay. You can't. Because you can't do it. You can't do it. Like it eats you up. Like people think, oh yeah, I want to feel the joy. I want to be, you know, this and that. But do you recognize like how much responsibility there is also in it? And believe you me, you get you are blessed because because there's a trust that happens. Uh, there's a tr trust mm -hmm. and a faith. And living in the unknown is not for everybody either because you you know. There's no certainty. Like sometimes there's no like the mind wants certainty, so, so you can't always have certainty. Mm. You know, so when you're in the unknown and you're in your childlike state, there's resp there's still responsibility on the earth. Like I got a car, I'm responsible for my car. I take care of my car. I pay the bills of my car. So there's this part where the adult adult version of you is playing with a child version of you and the child version is actually quite strong and it wants to play and be in the unknown and but yet the adult version will always want to have certainty so there's a way there's there's a thing where you really got to know how to balance that out and um this is when it comes into trust and faith and living in living in that place more and more and being responsible for it mm. Because we're on the planet and there's duality and there's forces. And so there's that place where, okay, if I do this, if I do that, like me coming on with you, Jerome, like I didn't have to think about it. There was no, as soon as you think and you have confusion, you know you're not in the right place. But it was like, oh, man, I can't wait to speak to Jerome. My gosh, I can't wait. You know, like it was so exciting. I didn't know what it was going to be like. We didn't know how we were going to speak. We didn't know what type of conversations we we're going to have, but you know, one thing I did know, I knew it was going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, already, it's already amazing. You know, it's it strikes up something because earlier you briefly mentioned that you got to a place where you you said there was no darkness. You said yeah. no darkness, and you know when you're saying that there is duality and that there are forces, but there is no darkness. What do you mean by that? Oh my gosh, what a great question. What a great, great question. So when we come here on the earth, we came in the fallen state, okay? okay? So we're dealing with time frames, past, present and future. But when we recognize that we are the light, everything comes aligned and magnetized to us. Mm -hmm. We don't align to everything out there. It comes aligned to us. So when you're playing in, in this world, you have to have a very, very strong field force that has to be created within you so that you recognize that you are the light, that you know who you are inside of you, which is the I am. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing in these forces here in this human place where it is all the realms and everything else, everyone talks about the limitless worlds, the starseed world, everything that people say, which is their truth, which isn't really the truth. It, it's um, you're dealing with that, and you know what? If 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 the if um, it'll always work through people, right? It would always work through people, and when you truly are unshakable, mm -hmm. and you are the solid rock that nothing will move you, they flee. A lot of it flees away. Because your power and strength is too strong, and there's something that you already are aware of. Like you are fully, truly awakened in a way that the mind is, right? But, but there's nothing like when you walk around. I, I, I witness so much. You have to spend a week with me, Jerome, really. You witness so much that you go, nothing can actually really touch you, and it becomes quite funny. Yeah. So 
it's sort of like anyone says anything to you it doesn't really matter of anyone like there's so much like honestly i've been stripped away to zero my husband i i, I was with a husband that was supposed to t die <laughs> you know i've gone through like so much so like nothing if you look back on it you're fine you're okay the divine's got your back right you know what goodness is you know what the light is stop trying to control everything you know you've only got your locus of control right you know what you can control forget everything else do not pay attention to it you know do not get it like people ask me about parasites for example right i said i didn't even go there i said i didn't get entertain it i said why entertain something that doesn't need to be entertained you know you know oh, did you have things come out of your backside i said when i was in my washing cleansing phase or whatever it was i just pressed the toilet button i said see you later alligator i didn't care <laughs> <laughs> you're like why, why, did, yeah. like, why get caught I love, why get caught in all, all that love, why what what yeah you're like just see you later i've got you know be gone be gone, be gone. gone. yeah yep. oh, why give God. it entertainment oh i could share so much i've gone through gone through a lot I mean, of course, you have too, and everyone go through their journey. Oh, what's the other one? Oh, you know, people don't like me. People don't understand me. People this, people that. Oh, my gosh. Like, go find some new friends <laughs> for a while. <laughs> I love, love just bring it down to earth. You make it so simple and plain, yeah. you know. We, we like to complicate things. We like mm -hmm. for things so complex and we we need that simplicity you know we need what you're bringing yeah, to us yeah. to let us know it's okay to just live simply to be simply to think simply to act simply you know and simplicity is 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 really the vibration right now because you know as you were as you're speaking you were talking also about earlier you said you don't really like the word fasting like fasting is not really a word that you enjoy and you in your vocabulary but you mentioned that there were other breatharians. So is breatharian a word that you enjoy in your, in your vocabulary? Like, how do you see that word breatharian? You know, I, when someone, when I was going through this journey with the fasting system I was in, someone said to me, oh, Ranjit, you're one of those people, right? And I said, because I was seeking people like me, like, you know, I knew about Jasmine because she comes from Australia. And I actually remember, some of the things that she went through when i was 15 16 i actually fasted for six months um when i was 17 and um automatically so there was something there but i had this sense that things were supposed to be simple in life they were never meant to be complicated and someone said to me oh you're one of those people ranjit and i said oh they're people like me like where are they <laughs> you know and so um then i started to read listen to some people and there were some similar patterns and things like that. But I recognized that I wasn't a breatharian. Like I didn't, I didn't know what that word meant. And then I looked it up and whatever it's about being unified, really, into the oneness. And um, then I knew, okay, yogis do this, they do this, blah, blah, blah. They I understood that the Bible actually teaches, you know, like to fast with God and all this sort of stuff. So a lot of those things came up and I went, but I don't resonate with the word breatharian, if you know what I mean. I just like, I, what's the context it's coming from? It's very watered down now. You know, everybody's a breatharian, even if they're drinking urine. And you know what I mean? Like, so I don't um, really, um, I don't go there, I suppose. But if someone wants to use the word, but what context are they using it from? And what perception are they coming from? Are they coming from a place where oh you're fasting and you're not eating well it's not really about that or you're coming from a place where you're um unified and you've had oneness experience it could be that are you talking about that you're not you know that it's a one breath where our skin breathes you know we don't have to really truly even breathe but you know so when you, when you talk about the word breath it reminds me of meditate being in meditative states more and uh, I wish we could have another word <laughs> that we could all agree on, but there's going to be no agreements because we live in duality and there's so many different words that get 
you know you know watered down words words aren't so powerful the sound of the word behind the word is probably more powerful mm. so the energy that it's coming from so you know i love singing like most people is there many also here? So me, I saw it. I think that's more breath airing. Wow. Wow. So just the energy, the energy itself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry, Jerome. I cry all the time. So if I cry, don't worry about it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'll just say, I know I've come out more because I'm more integrated and I understand more. And I don't want to confuse people because this journey is not for everybody, Jerome. Please know that it's not not for everybody. But if you can feel the place where you can just open up that space, that energy around here, more than any other place, you know, you're going to feel love. You know, I like to share one story with you, mm -hmm. please. And this is someone that was following me for a long, long time and did fasting and all sorts of things because of health reasons. But she started following me because like oh man i just really want to feel that place of love and i go we well, got to drop the mind and this and that come into music and she ended up you know in hospital and she would call me like 2 a.m in the morning what are you doing range oh, i'm listening to storm and you know thunderstorm music and going into that space you want to come with me and she she did and she watched all my videos on deep dive like all the real intimate ones and me climbing trees and talking about love and the joy. And she goes, I tried to do it through the mind. But the first time, because she was transitioning, she said, I know what you're talking about now. You're talk talking about this ecstatic love that you can feel. I felt it. She goes, I know what you're saying. She goes, I could never, ever feel it before. And done years of fasting, done years of breath work done years of trying to do you know chakra tuning and all these sorts of things that people do but she goes i didn't realize i had to really truly let go and i thought i was letting go but i never let go of the mind until now and now i feel it yeah so she she ended up transitioning but then i i learned something from that i learned the fact that, that you just, just can't will this through you know you can do do as many practices as you want you can do this and that i never did any of that don't do yoga don't do any of that it's just love just love just it's love all it is in a really really deep level not love from mm. the mind not love i love my mom i love this and but you can go deeper into that you know you can go deeper how more how much why do i love my mom like, how much do i love my mom like go deeper 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 into it oh she gave me birth she did this she nurtured me what does that feel like to be nurtured by your mother like what was it like when she was like my mom sings still does sings to her food in the garden <laughs> you know so like what was that like she really was so loved me so much unconditionally what was that love you know go deeper into it like if women have had children and stuff like that go deeper into when you go birth and what was it feel like i don't have any children myself um but yeah go into that and feel it and go back into that space and then you can have the connection and you know <laughs> just be, be that be in the high state of the state of joy that you can be in be in that state as much as you possibly can yes yes yeah I I agree. And, you know, when someone's listening to you and they're hearing about, you know, one of the people who was following you and that you said she transitioned, you know, once she got away from the mind, once, she, you know, she, she transitioned, she, she discovered that. When you say she transitioned and someone's asking, what do you mean she transitioned? Like, who, who was she before that she is no longer? And who is she now that, that can't go back? like what is that trend well 
definitely um it's a soul leaving the physical body the human form and moving into where she, her cre creation is and i be, i i feel that she went into the full light rather than getting trapped into the realms mm. so i feel she went home where she wanted to go she wanted to let go of the human body and and move on i, I don't I don't believe in reincarnation and things like that i don't believe you come back and reincarnate till you get it all right you know the greatest gift that we ever got is to be human because we we we, we did choose to come here and we evolve here we evolve here first we don't evolve over there we evolve here and this is the you know everything is slowed down and all this sort of stuff but isn't it great to feel goosebumps at the moment isn't it great to mm. hear our sounds isn't it great to feel our skin isn't it great just to open our eyes isn't it great that i get to be here with you mm -hmm. You know, being human and listening to each other, hearing our sounds with each other, that we also recognise we're all one, wow. and we are with that. We are with her, so it's sort of like or him because there is no gender, but we are with that, and uh, and that's with us. Wow, it's like incredible. It is. It is. It is. You know, you just you keep giving me flashbacks to different things like um there was a quotation i heard and it stuck with me ranjit and you probably heard this as well but it's just a saying that says we each have two lives and it says that our, our second life begins when we realize we we only have one you know you know and i thought about that for a long time because earlier you said you've you've lived ten lifetimes, and I was wondering what what are these ten lifetimes that you said that you lived? Are they lifetimes in this realm of existence in this in this room of the palace, or are they lifetimes that have happened before you were born? You don't you oh. don't believe in those? Yeah, yeah, okay. I can answer that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. When I say ten lifetimes, it's like someone had to come here ten times to experience what I've experienced as a human. So, like what I've gone through in my life here as Ranji, um, they probably like if you recognise, oh man, how did that person do what she's done? Well, I've gone through a lot to even be here as my fifty-three years or trips around the sun. So that's probably what I mean, and. Um, regards to everything else we are everything so we are all lives all everything you know your ancestors i am you and past present and future but what i recognize if i'm able to help you free yourself more a little bit you free everything else you do it it's up, up to anybody else okay so i'm everything like i I'm everything. I'm you. So I feel, I, 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 I mean, all, you know how they talk about clairvoyancy and all this sort of thing, right? It's true. But you know what? I'm not going to read, read you and do those things. I, I can. I could go in, you know, with permission and all this stuff. But you know what? What about, what about all the other people that you're connected to? You know, there's a, there's a, that's the integrity thing. There's a domino effect of everything that we do, an action, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got to be in our highest space to to enter into that. We've got to be in our highest space. Okay. You know, okay. You know when I look, yeah, yeah. So it's you know it's different from me being raised in the church years ago. This sounds very different because of course you talk about your angel your your angels your three beings the trinity you know the three beings that are around you that have been around you but you know when, when we hear about angels 
I was raised believing that there was some place over yonder called heaven that we were going to go to after we're not here anymore, oh. you know? When you say, you know, there is no after, like this is, this is it. This is all we have. Yeah. Do you feel you? It's in us. It, heaven's in us. Okay. Heaven's in us. Right, yeah. So heaven's it's like heaven is on earth. So it, it's in us because we created it. But where we, we go is already here. It's, it's like I don't know how to explain it. I know what you're saying because you, you know with, with the mind has to go forward with time, and it's like like you okay. We can talk about it in this way. We are one dimensional. You know they say multi dimensional. All this, but we are already connected to it all so we are right in heaven right now like we're the, we're right there and um i visit it for sure i i can feel it i've seen things and it's here mm -hmm. it's like um it's probably hard to make sense of because the mind will see things in pictures, like mm -hmm. you, know, you know, the imagery and things like that, and that's beautiful. Like colors are different, for example, and sounds are different. And so, when you feel, feel the sounds of heaven in you, it's not going to be the sound that you can actually hear outside of you. It's different. It has a more deeper, richer sense of um, everything. It's like um, you see the sun outside of you, right? You see, oh, there's the sun. I can see it. But no, the sun was already inside of you. See, I don't do those things like, you know, sun gazing or anything like that. I don't do that thing, oh, you need to go walk around and be nourished by the sun or all that sort of stuff. I don't do any of that because I recognize that I am the sun. So I am the moon. I am the stars. I am that. I am that. Yeah. Wow. So that heaven is that. It's inside of you, Jerome and everyone. Oh. You can feel it. You can feel it. Like, and the only way you can feel it, you have to let go of the mind and all those sorts of things and come to zero point and sort of work. You've got to dissolve. So <laughs> yeah. When you come to, like, when you're coming to zero point, you're dissolving. You're letting go of all the conceptions. You're letting go of all these, you know, things that, that block you from that awareness that heaven is here now. What, what, is, what is death in that, in that, you know, in that consciousness? When you have this consciousness, what could harm you, you know? The only thing can harm me is I have such great compassion. So basically, there is no suffering, right? Well, if there's no mind, there's no suffering. So I enter into people's suffering, or even my, my little Ranjit's suffering. That's That can harm me. But I enter into that place because I want to bring more light. Like when some people ring me and they tell me, you know, or whatever whoever it is message me their victim consciousness and i go into a little bit with them because i have such great compassion i can't help it but i always say this i protect myself a little bit now more i say i'll come into that place with you for a moment but i can't stay there with you because i'm not doing the right thing because i can only see you in the place that you are whole and healed and complete that you are the creation of the light that you are pure there is nothing ill about you. There's nothing unwell about you. You are perfect. So I can't stay there, but sometimes I go in and the mind will go in with me and I have such great compassion that I want to take it all from them, but I can't. And so it's like, oh, I, I, I can't do anything because the mind is there. The trickster's there. The programs are there. The devil playground is there. It's all there. And that's why. I, I really truly love this gateway of Easter and stuff like that because it is the Abba, the beginning of the love affair and the end of the love affair and the and when you forgive, it's the given it's the given forever of a love affair the that all, all mm. forgiving 
thing yeah it's already released and doesn't mean you know you forgive because you know whatever people go on about it you actually it's not even forgiving yourself it's actually forgetting in a way to, to release the other person and yourself from uh something that didn't even really happen which was an illusion mm. it never occurred in the first place it's just that perceptions this and that and every successful bonds and all sorts of things keeps it going wow it never mm. happened in the first never happened in the first place can you imagine i went to, i went to cape town in november and all i wanted to go was to Nelson Mandela's island when he was prison for 40 years and because he forgive you know the generals that you know that abused him but yet he still loved on them you know through the prison and all that sort of stuff and end up becoming something incredibly great we don't have to do that but I'm just saying if you look at that man like you want to change the world first person you've got to forgive is yourself mm -hmm. so you got to go look in the mirror and you know release yourself first and the rest is easy yeah wow. the rest becomes easier yes yeah, so i think that i think i can harm and do all that um definitely through through um that through the, those states of high energy of suffering of the world yeah okay okay thank you for that description thank you for that breakdown you know mm. forgiveness as well because it's a it's a big message you know and it's actually one of the things that was so challenging for me for so long ranjit when i heard a gentleman named uh dr wayne dyer you know this gentleman yeah 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 so the shit doc yeah dr wayne dyer he said something and i remember it was like an audio tape that i would listen to on repeat just wisdoms of the ages that he would speak on this audio tape and one of them was so challenging. He said, ultimately, there's nothing to forgive. Because there's nothing to judge and no one to blame. And I, I was like, what? What does that even mean? Like he said, there's nothing to even forgive because there's, there's nothing to judge and no one to blame. Like I said, what does that even mean? So that level of compassion or that level of just like you said it never even happened that's far beyond that's another level you know yeah 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 you know like i'll give you an example um and i, I was only taught i was only showing this more on a deeper level through the you know the non-eating stage of my life which is still non-eating um when i first, first got into it my first 108 days mm -hmm. and um he had to go back and forgive everything like even a sounds really silly but even a piece of paper that you threw on the ground you know like when you're a child and all sorts of things i had to go back and do all that i don't know why but i did i just went through the flow but i don't ask questions and there was something shown to me like when you want to dissolve trauma because trauma never existed anyway who said who called it trauma who labeled these things and give spells to it because the other person's been abused so it's like because i've heard so many stories and it's not nice for people to go through certain things in their life and that's why i have such deep compassion i want to go in there with them sometimes and just you know help them dissolve it a little, a little bit more but when you recognize that it never ever occurred and and you know even when you um that the body is not yours like this human form doesn't belong to you you don't own your emotions you don't own anything like when you get stripped away of everything you recognize that you own nothing mm. you know there's nothing that you own it's just you and god and the divine or all, all it wants is to have intimacy with you so it wants to dissolve everything for you so it recognizes that there is no trauma wow. and so uh, it never ever happened and, wow. and doesn't mean doesn't mean that you walk around not being respected you know because the respect will come because your field strength will grow people can't talk to you the way they used to be able to talk to you because they can't do it like they want to yell at you do something but they're like oh i can't do it i, I love there's something about you i love you there's a light or something they can't do it and they actually feel 
like if they've ever done anything to you that they actually get you know concerned and address that themselves mm. you know so yeah yeah it's about loving greater than who you really truly think you are and um, um if you feel and it's a really hard one to get because i don't think many people can even fathom that because a lot of stuff people have gone through it's awful like what's going through the world and all sorts of things how can you forgive that how can you say that's not trauma how can you say all those things you know but uh, if you want to dissolve faster and have a really great human experience you're going to have to dissolve it at some point and the quicker you get used to doing it all the time the faster you do that doesn't mean you're a doormat the stronger you actually become even in your mind to recognize is that this didn't happen to you right um that this is nothing happened to you we're, we're, we're all part of it you know we're all one of it and um that's why i have great compassion when people do go through things like i, I get it because it's me too <laughs> It's me too yeah 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 so i can help help in any way about forgiveness i would yeah no, it's a it's a big one yeah it is it really is no, yeah nothing to forgive i like what wayne dyer says nothing to forgive nothing to judge because once you go into the mind of comparison you're already judging mm -hmm. and um you know com you know oh that person looks like that or that does and that one does that diet and that one does this there is doesn't really matter mm wow wow so we don't even own our bodies our body is not even something you say we don't even own our body no the create it's creation it goes back to the earth it's not yours it's not yours wow. wow the ego the ego thinks it is the ego plays a good part it protects us you know it's, it, ego has a good thing to play here you know you know when you first were a child and um somebody gave you a toy or whatever you always used to say to yourself that's mine that's mine it's not yours it's mine mm -hmm. you don't own it i own it <laughs> wow wow so we're just body... bor borrowing it yeah like that okay yeah. and you know there was one more thing i had it you earlier you said you did a decade of celibacy still i am okay still okay mm -hmm. over ten, a ten and a half years yeah over a decade of celibacy what even got you on that trajectory when it came to like relationships oh. or when it came to you know you you wanting that for your life path well i kind of never chose it <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, there is something there, and it's quite personal, but I don't mind sharing because I shared it with Frederick the other day, um, is when I was like 16, 17, and I had my first boyfriend, you know, never, ever done anything. You know, back in those days, there's no internet, there's none of that. Curiosity was the game, and he didn't understand. And um, we engaged to a engaged into it and it was the most you know usually for women it's not a very nice experience physically mm. and uh you know and i felt i never wanted to and i never wanted to engage then i just felt so horrified with myself and disappointed with myself if anyone asks me Randy, what's the biggest regret in your life i have no regrets except for that one wow and uh uh, yeah, and I didn't want to be in that way, even though I had boyfriend after that, and you know, you know, all sorts of things. I've had very, very, very minimal partners, Jerome, in my life, and um, I recognised something about the womb even then, and how pure and beautiful and clean, you know, being a woman is, and I, I just always wanted to be there. And I wanted to com commune with God even then, because God comes into those places too. And so I'm not saying to anyone, don't have a divine partner, don't do any of that. This is just my experience, what I found, is that I found that less engagement of physical penetration um, 
was a lot better lifestyle for me because you got to be careful <laughs> you know in a way because you're dealing with people's energies that are through their body and whoever you know they've come through in that but when you when you become more pure in, in a way more cleansed is that you recognize that the sexuality part wasn't for that because there is miraculous conception there's a whole thing that i've been shown but uh, but the sexuality was for myself mm. and, and the divine and i find that i'm more sexual that way and so as i I kind of fell back into it again. I found this rising of this energy through my womb, which actually led me to, to fasting a little bit as well with the purity. So I felt this place and I went, oh my gosh. And then even went through the fasting stage, and I think a lot of people will experience this. And I didn't know about it until someone else told me about, don't you know, this happens to people when they fast and this and they get connected. And I said, I didn't know. But you get very highly sexual. You get very, very heightened, and uh, um, you don't even realise it's even happening. And I went through a stage where I actually wanted to, you know, engage. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Going, this, this is wrong." Until you dissolve all the thoughts of the world, because pornography is still number one addiction in the world, and it's all in us. And once you dissolve all that, then you re recognise I'm communion. I am a breatharian. I am united with the greater one in me now. And I'm not going to give that up for anyone because you come into a very sacred, secret place and there's a lot of wisdom there as well. And so you can't, I, can't even, I can't even put words around it. But if I ever say to a woman, just try, try it. <laughs> you know, even if you're young and everything, you know, don't, don't, like just go here for a little while. Test it out if you're going on this journey, that is. Go deeper, feel your womb feel that place of cleansiness and purity and all that you know because man you know you know i've had, had those experiences for sure jerome you know people talk about kundalini and all that sort of stuff i don't like that word either <laughs> but i've had all those you know there's, there's lots of stories in my deep dive soul group i tell you with all my videos and everything there's just like when i've gone into shopping centers and i've had ecstasy with a tomato and picking it up and feeling and, and absorbing the energy of the tomato whatever nutrients maybe my body might need things like that like i couldn't cut a lemon because i'm gonna hurt it <laughs> you know? there's lots of there's just lots of things where you know everything becomes a living being and energy and entity and who we are so I get what the Indians and the yogis talk about. They can't stamp on a, an ant or do any of those sorts of things because everything becomes alive in you. Mm. And that too also becomes alive. The celibacy becomes more important, actually. Very vital. Vital. It comes vital in this journey, yeah, for me. Look, so it's essential. Yeah. It's like... Um, Man, if you if you make a choice, right, mm -hmm. and you know you have multiple multiple partners, I mean, there's a responsibility in that, <laughs> just on the physical level. But you know, then there's that love that you have for the, the divine within you that you don't want to give that away either. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, no, you know, I can't. It's just like it's just so beautiful and magical. Nothing can ever replace it. Nothing can replace it. No need outside of you can ever replace that. It's so ecstatic. Like you're going, oh, no, I stay pure. <laughs> it's like the divine um, is a jealous divine. It wants you all to itself in a way. And I think the only way if it ever, ever happened, it'd have to be something where it's fully guided, you know, if there had to be some form of union or something like that. But I have no need for that. <laughs> is, is this what, like, um, you talked about J.J. Mean, uh, Jazz Muheen earlier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're the only one, I've never heard anybody say J.J. Mean. I've never heard anybody say that. You're the only one who's called it that I've, I've ever heard. I read a <laughs> book back in the day, and it was called... Um, Food of the Gods, Food of the Gods by, by Jasmine Heen. And in that book, she kept using this acronym and it was D-O-W, 
D-O-W, D-O-W throughout the whole book, Jess Bohin kept writing D-O-W. And it turns mm-hmm. out that it's called the, the divine one within. Like that's- Yeah, oh wow. Kept saying it over and over, the divine one within, the divine one within, the divine one within. So is this what you're talking about, the jealous divine? I think, I think so. There's this thing where, oh my, my gosh, like once, once, if you go on this journey and it, and you allow it to take you, you ain't going back. <laughs> You're not going to go back. Like it's like everything within you will, will, will do not to go back because it's so flipping like, oh, you can't put words around it. Like it's everything. That intimacy with the divine, um, the sacred celibacy. I don't really like that word, but I just use it sometimes because, you know, it makes people think, you know. So you're telling me I can't have food and now you're telling me I can't have sex. And I'm like going, well, it depends what you want to experience as a human. But if you want to go more deeper, more richer, this is part of it, I, I feel. I do feel it. Somebody, so many people will will correct me for their perception, but I can only talk from my experience. You know what I mean? And I'm not right or wrong or anything. I just, I'm having an awesome time being a human at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you even said that, Ranjit. You said, you know, if you want to have an awesome human experience, you know, to have an awesome human experience, is that, would you say that that's the purpose or the meaning of life to have an awesome like human experience do, do you feel like that's the meaning wow that's a very good question if we do if we do have the most all all of us do have the most awesome experience of being human this would be a greater planet if we choose to really do that um because if you can evolve greater here you're going to have the most awesome experience the most hu- awesome human potential we 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 were we're already creating so much already so things that haven't even been manifested here have already been created we want to move faster in that so i like talking with you know eric and frederick you know they're just to talk about fasting and i like talking with nicholas on you know breatharian world i like all that i love being part of it because if we can just flip the needle just a little bit more and people are more becoming more awakened as we know like my my if you listen to some of my past videos you know many people say to me that doesn't even make sense but now they're saying to me oh now i understand what you're saying mm-hmm. because the more we speak out into the atmosphere the more that oh, i have no problems with technology by the way i've got no problems getting on it this and that i am technology i created this so we all created it the more that we speak into the the waves um of this planet the more that the universe we're here you know it comes down to our cell really you know our atom of our cell it comes down to being with that which expands to being with every cell in the cosmos and here in the planet Mm -hmm. and uh so i think what if you were the greatest human potential ever like what 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 would that be for you and uh uh, i think that would be pretty incredibly amazing can you imagine wow (laughs) we wouldn't have to talk so much (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, so, I love you know, it. I I told you, Renji, like this whole conversation, you've brought up so many memories for me, like memories where, wow. I mean, this journey really started for me when I met, you know, some monks and nuns, actually, because, wow. you know, earlier you were talking about you almost became a nun or you were thinking about becoming a nun at one point and meeting these monks and nuns from Myanmar, you know, they were Burmese, so they were from Burma. They took me into their center. And when they were talking about, you know, sacred celibacy, or as you you don't really like to call it, but when we're, they were talking about things that made it seem like, if you've ever heard that expression, you know, nothing tastes as good as, as healthy feels, right? 
Mm. Nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. Well, they were kind of making me think like there's no sex or, or physical that feels as good as purity, oh, you know? Oh my gosh, that is true. That is true. Let me tell you, you end up having sex with everything else. That's what happens. You clean the air with your purity because of because of that like that's how you enter into the atmosphere more like you your wound but she got, i don't know if it's different from men i know men have these brain explosions and i get all that like they can really have an incredible experience for a man so my experience as a woman here is um like man like everything becomes the womb wow. it's like this is a whole conversation on its own and I'm enjoying this right now and I'm just going to allow whatever flows that needs to be present at this moment for everybody. But man, when you really go into that place of the womb, it's my favourite topic actually, the orgasmus state. Mm -hmm. Out of all, you know, the heart is great but when you start opening up the fire and you've got the oil coming down you and that brings it all up and you start to feel the scent of roses and flowers and because it all becomes you, that you are it, you are the rose that you are the flowers, that you are the lotus, that you are all that. Like you go, my God, can it get any better than being a human right now? Flipping no way. This is it, Jerome. This is it. This is it. We can forget everything else. We go serve the planet. We do all that. We nourish. We, we, we become really good humans and... Let's go help, you know, the other countries and make everything equal and we're all the same and we do all those things. But, man, when it comes to this stuff, like the orgasm state and what you were talking to me about where you experienced, I didn't know that. Like, you got to tap into that more because it, it's so beautiful. <sighs> Give celibacy a go, but not from a place of that you're actually um, not having anything, that you're giving something away from the fact that you're gaining everything yeah yeah you got it when, <laughs> when we are empty when we are empty we are full what? all these, wow. these lies people tell us <laughs> we are empty we are full wow wow that's yeah. wisdom that's yeah. wisdom yeah yeah that's wisdom yeah that's we we know we know it very well oh same with gosh. that and it that. it just same sounds paradoxical yeah. you know we it's like the truth is is paradoxical it sounds like a contradiction you know mm. but you like the the emptiness is fullness yeah you know? yeah 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 it's back backwards it backwards. seems back yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is like come on women like we don't penetrate from outside in we penetrate inside out <laughs> We we finish. We go out and we, you know, the, you know, and I'm going to female male energy too. But like, you know, the magnetism, right? So everything is drawn drawn to us. If we're pure, only purity can be drawn to us. Or we clean, we clean the the atmosphere. Like somebody was asking me, oh, um, oh, do I still get whatever comes out of your body? You know. <laughs> I said, look, I go in the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is dirty, right? Mm. I'm in a different thing. Like, so it's – I'm cleaning it as I walk around, mm. you know? So we all do that, but you've got to kind of be really kind of pure, you know what I mean? Like Ma from India, right? So I love that lady. Mm. Um, that lady, we're from 4 in the morning all the way to night, and people go, oh, I'm all busy, 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 busy. But don't you understand that what that lady was experiencing in between all the busy, busy, if you want to call it that, is the spaces in between it. Mm -hmm. The moments in between. If you can feel the greatest force of love, even for a moment, you have eternity. Just once. Just once. Can you give it all away just for once? Mm. 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 Ugh. <laughs> you want to 
keep doing all that stuff with you know eating all this drinking i'm going to plant medicine as well i don't agree with it <laughs> if you can you can give it all away and just be really truly empty and with yourself just for one moment yeah. so so when it comes to being empty and this is the last thing i wanted to ask was is that is that how you live life now just in the emptiness like um with people's concept of not eating not drinking is this how you exist now or do you go oh, through you go yeah i go through different phases i i have uh, i mainly live on liquids wets and dries okay so liquid is um something um that you're still operating the digestive system mm -hmm. right wet uh, you're not operating the digestive system. This is all like your pasteurized juices, herbal teas, you know, veggie broth, liquid, you know, you're not operating. And then the dries is absolutely having nothing at all. Mm. Now, I have done a lot of nothing. Right? And, and I still continue to do so. But I will never, ever talk about the days because you know why? There's two reasons why. One is sacred. And number two, if I go tell someone, man, you know, you know, Ranjit, you know, she nearly did a year of nothing. Rah, rah, rah. I'm going to go do that. So then I'm going to put some sticky tape or, you know, you know, wire my mouth together because she can do it, I can do it. And then I become responsible. So mm -hmm. this is a personal journey. And also the body has to adapt to whatever it is. And, you know, if you go into fast, the most important part is about breaking the fast. So you have to become wise and all that. And, you know, people have events and things like that. I'm not going to tell them not to say, hey, you know, you're going to your daughter's marriage. <laughs> you know, you're not going to whatever. When you when you recognise that when your body becomes more light, it's, it's really interesting. You should actually be not be skin and bone. You sh mm. should be gaining muscle. Mm. There should be muscle muscle on you like the, there should be some sort of strength and flexibility with you so when you become light it's a whole different world it's it's, it's like you don't you don't need anything all is given within you but yes i do have liquids wets and dries and i actually teach a little bit this on deep dive the soul we've got there's a program there which is zero cost and it's called nine months to nine days and that's getting helping someone get to nine days of having nothing okay. through new, new moon full moon and season changes because season changes are very very powerful gateways i don't go into astrology or anything like that but the universe does guide us and there's some universal laws and um so that helps to tap in to those spaces and i've been doing that for four years and uh, um just by my own personal experience really like yeah. how do you do that like how do you do it how do you do it well the universe is important too to help and guide us as we created it yeah yeah, yeah. i love that it's sacred you know i love that it's sacred for you that you don't tell people the days you don't tell people you don't give them the number you don't give them the the you know for the ego that wants to know about or the satisfying the mind that wants to rationalize or wants to think or wants to logically how is it you know because i know that people like jasmine Heen, people have been blamed and criticized and shamed and guilted into saying it's because of you that these people are no longer here because they thought that they could do what you did you know yeah. so that's very true it's you, true. You avoid it's, uh, that. Yeah, because you know what? what? It is sacred and secret and an intimate, an intimate connection that you have with the divine. And I do share sometimes with people if they, you know, like they really want to know and they know me and they know my journey. They've probably seen me through the fasting system I was on for 518 days. They witness people that might hang around me. They witness things. Um, I usually drink with people if I'm going to go social. To interact now more than I ever used to be before because my ego would come in like I can't have that no I can't do this I can't do that so I'll have and most people are kind of aware of my lifestyle I know I don't talk about it I just allow it to be and um, I've found ways of course through this journey of you know since 2018 
Like how you maneuver in this world by, by living this lifestyle. And I haven't really, like most people wanted me to go on YouTube and do all these things in the past and I couldn't do it because of that. Because the world's not ready, they're always here. But mm. we can bring, it is, it, is a, it is a proper lifestyle and it is possible. And what Nicholas talks about is, is quite correct. There's many, 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 many people like living, up, living like this. But I don't find too many people uh, um, that have had the same experience as me, like in the sense that I came from a place of Yeshua and Christ and the heart. I hear a lot more Indian things. And I'm not yeah. saying that's wrong or right or whatever it is or, you know, you know, but it, everything's possible. It's just a personal experience. And usually you find the people that have the experience is not what the normal is, even in going through, through certain things. Like you'll find that, you know, when I come, if I come across people, it's like that really are breatharians. There's something a little bit different, you know, like, you haven't followed, I don't know, I just, uh, I think the more association, connection and activation you have, the more closer you're in it, uh, I think you can have better experiences because the mind begins to accept it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I live a lot more on empty than I do, you know. Okay. Well. Yeah. Well, this this has been so filling. This has been so mm. nourishing. This has been amazing. This has been so refreshing. Just to to finally hear you, to witness you, to feel your energy, and just to hear this transmission of truth. I feel like you've just been transmitting truth. You've been just channeling truth just through this. And I, I like how you say about technology. You're like, I don't I don't care about, you know, speaking through technology. I made the technology. I created this technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can go on about that. I can go about five G or that. <laughs> you know, just just to have if this you, Yeah, if you're pure light, it nothing matters. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Like you just like let go of everything. It's like you actually go through a journey like you're trying to let go of things and you, you, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't hear this, I can't this and that, right? You're actually more ego in a way, spiritual ego, and then you kind of like go, oh, after all that, I recognise I was all wrong, you know. You know, it was just like you didn't have to do any of it. <laughs> wow. wow. You didn't have to do any of it. Well, you know, if you get to the end of your human form leaving your body and you always said to yourself, what about, Everything I ever thought about was completely wrong. But the other way, you know, it was all wrong. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You're never, ever wrong if, if you come from a place of kindness and gratitude. You're never wrong in that. Gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah. That's gratitude. Well, thank you so much. You know, if somebody's seeing you for the first time, Ranji, oh they want to, you know, yeah. and they want to with you they want to get in touch with your group or maybe you know join you know where you where you have your offerings where would you tell people to go to receive more of you you know and more of the group you know, i'm probably in a place where no not many people like going but i kind of am there which is deep dive into the soul group and if people are more than welcome to come there they can be part of the nine months to nine days mm -hmm. and we all, all expand our hearts together regardless what you're doing even if you're eating lighter, you know, so we we expand our hearts together. So they're more than welcome. That's free. Okay. No cost, how, did, you know. how did they join? How did they join the group? I think, uh, um, I, I don't know if they have to be friends with me, but sometimes people find it. Like okay. they, because uh, I have to prove them. So if they, I'll pop it here, deep dive into the soul Facebook group. I'll put the link here okay. for, in your, in your, in your, yeah, thing if you like. Okay. Yeah, I like that. So you have to find it, you know. Ask and you shall receive. You yeah, know, you find yeah. it. I'm on. I'm on Telegram too, but like there is a deep dive soul channel on tele Telegram. Okay. But you can't you can't interact. But I just put things there if I'm doing a video like this and that, and you know there'll be a few people here coming, finding out. You know, I like I like collaboration. Mm -hmm. You know, so 
wherever I'm talking and that, I'll put that on the Telegram group. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. I find it. I find. I find it hard. Like uh, people messaging me because I, I I can't. It's really hard. Hard because I get a lot of that, and um, I prefer to go in the deep dive soul group if they can. You know. Okay. If they can, and there's lots of YouTube, lots of videos out there about me. Okay. All right. All right. Well, just enjoy the rest of your time. You um, know, the rest of your, the rest of your experience, the rest of your moment. You know. So where do you, where do you live? Where do you live? You live oh. in the US. So yeah, currently I'm in the USA. Yeah. So I'm in a little state called Texas oh, here oh. in the US. Awesome. Because I'm coming to LA, I don't care if people know, because um, I put it on my timeline anyway, mm -hmm. in first week of December. Wow. Nice. So people yeah. can meet up with you. You're, you're coming all yeah. the way from Australia to, yeah. to Los Angeles. Yeah, just for a couple of weeks. Okay. But in December. I put that on my timeline, yeah, and Instagram. When I, I do tell people where I go sometimes. <laughs> but, yeah, if there's, there's people want to meet up, I might organize something, but, yeah. Nice. It'd be great to meet. It'd be great oh, to meet. Oh, well, it would be great to meet you. Oh, my gosh. That would be the best. We could have fun. fun. I'd love to meet <laughs> you. We will have fun. We will have fun. In the fun. human form. I'd love to hug you more than wow. anything. Yeah, i like to do that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're amazing. I love you, Jerome. What's we your... love you man we love you Mwah. i love everyone here for watching and staying on to the end much love see i can talk forever i better go hey <laughs> okay. All right. yeah good night. i'll let you end it i don't know how to end oh i'll press the cross okay bye bye bye, -bye.